hubris, excessive pride or self-confidence, and arguably the sole cause of Meghan and Harry's downfall. This was a couple who managed to win over the entire world and lose it within the span of a few years. The 8th of January, 2020. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry publicly announced to the world that they will be stepping down as senior working royals. And as was the case with the announcement of their engagement just over two years prior, this news set the world alight. Now, the general consensus is that this statement was released without the prior consultation or approval of the Queen or the palace, a claim which Meghan and Harry deny to this very day. But the truth can be readily determined from the statement itself. Statements like, we have chosen to make a transition this year and work to become financially independent while continuing to fully support Her Majesty the Queen clearly indicate that the couple were aiming for and announcing their half in, half out, have your royal cake and eat it too lifestyle. But we also know that once the Sandringham Summit was held, None of Meghan and Harry's terms and conditions were accepted by the Queen, despite all four royal households bending over backwards and working around the clock to make it happen. And so to me, this is irrefutable proof that they didn't consult with the Queen before releasing the statement because she never agreed to anything contained within the statement. So much to Meghan and Harry's chagrin, the half in, half out life they wanted was nothing more than a work of fiction. And it would remain so to this very day, despite the Sussex's best efforts. But despite holding her ground, the queen didn't want to end things on a sour note with the couple. And so she released a heartfelt statement, which the couple shared on their official Instagram, wishing them and their new child a happy and peaceful life. After their farewell rainbow tour of March, 2020, the couple embarked on a 12 month review period where they were to live in Canada, presumably, for 12 months to test out this new independent lifestyle that they craved. Now, we all know how that played out because it turned out that Canada was just a front or a bridge rather to their intended destination of California. I don't really have much to say about the 12 month review period other than we've seen more of Meghan and Harry popping up in every single Zoom call they could than we've seen of them as actual working senior members of the royal family. But at the beginning, despite their deception about their ultimate destination, they did seem to play nice for a little bit, at least on the surface. That is, until the facade of obedience started to slip once again. By the end of 2020, the Sussexes had crossed more than a few lines as royals, including involving themselves in political campaigns and monetizing their royal titles. Once the 12 month review period was over and it was clear that the queen wasn't going to budge and wasn't going to bow down to their demands, the Sussexes turned their minds to what would soon become their full-time occupation, revenge. The 7th of March, 2021, the Oprah Winfrey interview. After the bombshell news of Megxit just a year prior, it looked like the Sussexes had developed a taste for the detonation of unforeseen nuclear bombs. And the fact that Harry's ailing grandfather, Prince Philip, who was almost 100 years old and on his deathbed, didn't seem to give them pause. Enough has been said about the interview throughout the years, including on this channel. But the summary is, it was littered with hateful lies. Lies which they have since backtracked from, despite accepting awards, of course, <laughs> and lies which didn't stand the test of time. It seemed that the backlash from the interview did nothing to give them pause. Instead, it stoked their desire for more lies, for more chaos, for more destruction. Even Prince Philip's death, not long after the airing of the interview, didn't hamper their inexplicable desire for vengeance. And it's not like all of the senseless attacking was based on fact. As is ever the case with these two, whether it's in a court of law, as we've recently seen with Prince Harry and even Meghan a couple of years ago, or an interview, nothing they ever allege is based on fact 
or truth. The only truth this couple seems to observe is their truth, their subjective perception of reality, rather than objective reality itself. It was already evident by this point that their truth was a euphemism for a lie. And whenever they were caught out in a lie and called out for it, they blamed everything under the sun to justify their actions rather than come clean and take accountability for once in their lives. But as their torrential lies began to unravel, so did Meghan and Harry's fall from grace start to pick up the pace. By September of 2021, a mere few months since the Oprah interview, the couple had already become a laughing stock. Okay, so what we're gonna do is gonna do is put some highlight slips back here and you're good to go. Mm. You're good to bring down it's, the monarchy. It's pretty shocking. <laughs> Without the royal luster, it soon became clear that not only were Meghan and Harry quite underwhelming, but they were also painfully entitled and impossibly vindictive. With no particular skills or talents to speak of, they were like flags in the wind, blowing whichever way the woke hype took them. From cringeworthy talk show skits that demeaned the royal titles that were so generously bestowed upon them, to orchestrating pseudo royal tours to make content for Netflix, where they cosplayed as compassionate humanitarians complete with thousands of dollars worth of clothing and jewelry, of course. And it seemed as though the more their antics were ridiculed by the media, the more eager they were to deliver. They even had the audacity to spearhead a campaign against bullying and misinformation. But it seems that in addition to the countless PR blunders that Meghan and Harry have committed throughout the years, they also miscalculated one very important fact, everything gets old at some point. The year ended with the embarrassing revelation that Meghan hadn't exactly been entirely honest with the courts of the UK when she claimed that she had nothing to do with the writing of Finding Freedom. Because uh, it turns out she had a lot to do with it. But in her usual fashion, she went on as though nothing happened and continued to preach truth and standing up for it mere hours after proof of her own dishonesty under penalty of perjury in a sworn statement were making headlines. If you know the difference between right and wrong, you must stand up for what's right, and that's what I'm doing. And so, with the last remnants of their credibility hanging on for dear life, 2022 wasn't exactly an improvement for the couple. After a disastrous Jubilee appearance, it was clear that the once darling royal couple were darlings no more. But the most twisted occurrence took place later in 2022, not long after the shocking announcement of our beloved Queen's passing. The 10th of September, 2022, the Windsor walkabout. The world was in mourning, including, it seemed, Meghan and Harry, despite making a lucrative career out of trashing the institution that the Queen tirelessly headed for the past 70 years. Perhaps what makes these few days most egregious in hindsight is the knowledge that these two were walking about, accepting people's sympathies and flowers and hugs, when they alone knew what they were about to unleash against the royal family and the people of the United Kingdom in just under three months' time. The 8th of December, 2022. Harry and Meghan, a Netflix reality show about the couple, releases. Now, I have an entire series <laughs> covering this travesty of, you know, a reality show because I refuse to call it a docu-series. A documentary is based on fact. But I think it would be accurate to describe the series as the final nail in the coffin, the nuclear bomb that Meghan and Harry released but ended up blowing up right in their faces. And then because that wasn't enough, Harry's memoir when? was released less than a month after the final episode. And shortly after that, the couple was officially immortalized as a laughing stock in the form of this masterpiece of an episode produced by South Park. If the past few years have demonstrated anything, it's that 
these two individuals are incapable of learning from their mistakes, incapable of self-improvement, because the first step to self-improvement is recognizing that you have a problem, something which they both are violently allergic to. And in a bizarre move that was somehow meant to be convincing, they recently released a statement, which nobody asked for, stating that they had nothing else to say about the royal family. And so as a result, they were going to stop. To me and many others, that's the translation for WME, Megan's new management, probably pointed out that, hey, if you're gonna be our client, uh, we can't have someone with your reputation in our portfolio. Because if this was genuine, it doesn't make sense. This statement is at complete odds with what Harry and Meghan have been saying for years now, which is we have so much more to say. Now it remains to be seen whether this impulsive and addicted to chaos couple are actually going to heed the warnings and guidance of this new management team. But if past behavior is the best predictor of future behavior, I personally wouldn't hold my breath. See you later.